I'm not about objects. I'm all about people, community, city, and performance art. You know, so many performance artists have a different uh, statements what performance is. My uh, definition of performance is, performance is mental and physical construction, which is designed to be in an exact place and time with the public enter. And then energy dialogue between performer and public have to happen. I just want to start with a very s one little video of two minutes. This performance is investigating three different social groups, performing the same task, transporting stones from one side of an empty room to the other side. The first group is simple. Two individuals each have two buckets to carry the stones by him or herself. The second group is two people working together. They carry three buckets between them, each has one bucket, and they share the third. The third group is a human chain passing the stones down the line by hand. When Ulai and me originally did this performance in 1978, we found that the first group to give up is the relationship, the two people sharing the bucket. The next to give up are the two individuals. The chain is the most efficient method. The chain has the most endurance the chain stays forever. Right. So, as I say, I would like for my work to function as a constant mirror, so that the public does not see me in the work, but rather themselves. That is fundamental thing. So I would like to actually take you a little bit from the past into my work. In 1974, I made performance Rhythm Zero, which I put 72 objects on the table and with the pl for the pleasure, but also for the pain, and including the pistol with the bullet. It was an experiment, and I was young and foolish, but it was an experiment to see what if I give the public an entire opportunity to do whatever they want, how far they can go. I end this experiment with the knowledge that actually public can kill you. So I understood that it's a very interesting, uh, interesting thing that actually you can take best out of the public or you can completely transform public into something else and leave the spirit, which took me almost 40 years of my career to do. So in this, I just go right through these images where the public, you know, in the beginning, uh, you know, they would give me rose, but later on they would, you know, th they would take the pins and stuck in my body, they would use the pistol, they would carry me around. It was a very violent experience. It took six hours when I came to the hotel and I look myself in the mirror, I just had a piece of white hair. I knew this was a dangerous area to, you know, em to embark. After this, I would like to show you some other things where I actually think that how I involve the public into, the, into the, my work in different ways. 
I uh, was invited for the Triennale in, uh, in um, um, Japan, and uh, uh, I was uh, asked to make the work there, and I make a dream house. This dream house was idea to serve as a, actually, hotel. Because one thing which we don't have anymore in our lives is the dreams. We don't dream anymore. Or we leave television on, or we take sleeping pills, or we are so distracted and wake up in the night. But the idea of the dream is really ancient kind of idea. So I create this tatami house, and when you come in, it's only four rooms, and it's existed already 12 years now. You can, you can arrive and you can have make telepathy phone calls. Of course, the telephone never worked, but the telepathy phone calls is a metaphor. Then you go in, you can have a glass of water. You go, you, you, um, um, this is the citizens of the village. The, this was done for the small village of 36 people who are rice, rice uh, workers. And the idea was to be you know, exposed for the Triennale. And there, the citizens of this village was the first, uh, actually, people who slept in this house. And they have uh, four rooms. And if you take one of these uh, dream suits with the magnets, you will go into the dream room or the blue room or the green room, whatever you know, rooms are there. And when you wake up in the morning, you will have the dream to write in. So the citizens in this house, after the Biennale was finished, they actually demanded that this dream house become part of the community. And now they took care of it. There was an earthquake, they repaired the house, and they actually belonged to them. So it was the first time in my life that actually I understood that art piece can be part of the community and have his own life without me. After 12 years, we just published Dream Book, which is international. And this, uh, you can go and sleep in this dream house. It's, it's actually six months in advance booked. So after this, I, um, just to show you how, in, the, in many ways, um, I was thinking how to deal with the public in different way as a community. But in this performance in MoMA, which they, I just have a three months performance sitting in the, in, on the table in the front of the audience, I was, for me, it was interesting how I can take um, our, the, the public not as individual, not as a group, but as individuals. Relation was one to one. And then this was quite a different uh, idea that actually uh, I understood that the public these days doesn't want to uh, look always at something, they want to be part of something. And uh, this actually brought me into this all new area, how the public become my main subject of my work. Um, experience was so strong that after I stand up from this uh, performance uh, in, um, in um, MoMA, I was not the same anymore. I understood one incredibly important thing, that actually artists have to be servant of society. And not just the servant of society, but artists have, have to really have responsibility. And this was the idea of my institute was born. And institute was really have the idea of preservation of performance art, working with the young generation of performance artists, have educational elements, but also how to deal with the public in the large uh, spaces. Not just the, the public, art public, but general, everybody. So um, this is just some of these slides I'm just going through of the people emotional response of this piece. And then, this is the statement that really inspired me. The new type of art institute cannot merely be an art museum, but it has been until now, but no museum at all. The new type will be more like a power station, a producer of new energy. And that's where actually I am right now. So how to be done this? I create something called Abramovich method. And this method, you know, it's very simple. When you go to the museum or to the art gallery, first you, you enter in the space with the lockers. In these lockers, you have to put your telephone, your computer, your watch. This is the moment when you give yourself this special freedom of being all you know, alone without technology. It, don't take me wrong, I'm not against technology. Technology is not wrong, it's our approach to technology which is wrong, because it took all our time and we are addicted. So when you enter to this new space, you get headphones. These headphones are incredibly important. Headphones block the sound. I remember a little young kid coming to Japanese to my show, and he put headphones, and he said to me, but it doesn't work. 
of course it doesn't work, because every time you put headphones, you have to hear something, but this is actually blocking the sound. The moment you block the sound, you're together with everybody else in the room, but at the same time, you're alone. You can hear your heart beating. You can actually, you can be in this, in this space and in contact with yourself that you all the time avoid, because you're not doing this at home, you're not doing anywhere else. So I create a situation that can be done. So in one of the first methods we done in Milano, it was really important, because on, the, on, the, on this side, you see the public experiencing the method, and other public watching. But then the public who watch become one who experiment, and one who experiment become the watch. So it's a kind of system that is actually like perpetuum mobile, exists by itself. Artists doesn't even need to be in the space, can be actually organized in that way. So the, art, the, the public is not anymore just silent spectator and looking something. Public is actually being part of it. And only way to experience performance is literally to uh, actually understand how that works by doing it. Because nobody till now been actually uh, changed by somebody else reading the great book and somebody else's journey. You have to make your journey yourself. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So this is what I'm trying to actually do. So exercises in the Bramwich method are very simple. Slow walk, counting rice, platform, looking at the colors, mutual gaze, beds. And we are doing this in different places of the world. The institute we create, which actually the one of the, of the designer and the, the architect of the institute is Rem Kohlhaus, is still in Hudson and is not developed yet, but because we, you know, we have to fundraise and so on. But right now we have this attitude. We don't, don't come to us, we come to you. Right now we're in the Greece. This will be slow motion walk. And um, very simple, sl really stopping time. Slow motion walk. This will be exercise counting the rice. Huge groups of people counting the rice. And counting the rice is such a simple exercise, but deals with time. And when you start counting the rice, this will be all family counting the rice, four hours. They start getting involved into this time, and time stops. Uh, which is important in this county rice exercise is, you know, you first they, they have lentils and rice, you divide them, and then you start counting. In the beginning, it's amusing. Then you get angry. Then you get frustrated. Then you start mind working. You say, what the hell I'm doing here? Why I'm doing this? But after you pass all this time, it once time stops existing, and you get this incredible tranquility and peace. And then, as you see, there's so many different ways of doing it and how this express everybody personality. Anyway, so after counting the rice, oh God, we have so much counting the rice, we have look at the colors, primer colors, red, blue, the, the, and, um, and um, the, with red, yellow, and blue, the primer colors. Each of these primer colors creates certain, certain um, a, you know, a state of mind. And in the different places, people have a very strong experience. This was in Buenos Aires where the people stand on the platforms, which is a very important, actually, point of this exercise. Let me show you the platforms. Where, which platforms are just the small pieces of wood, which is only 15 centimeter, actually, away from the ground. But they have certain energy. If nothing you do there except standing, that's the <coughs> one of the platforms. So you stand on this platform with eyes closed, together with other people. On these platforms, we could have anybody from uh, Bangladeshi housewife to science fiction writer to the to the president uh, of the of the of the corporation to the teacher or the little child and the people who come for large amounts and just be there for a long period of time and this little young kid who stand there every day for 10 days and I ask him but why are you there why are you coming always and stand on this platform and he said I'm so bad in the school but when I found this platform it's so peaceful so I will go to the end of my in my room and in my home and just stand there and then everything's going to be okay so this is like just a simple systems to me this image says everything about that this is really family three different generations experiencing that kind of moment of of, of connection with their own self. All right, so visitors' numbers are in all the places various. We just done in Australia, which in, in 12 days we have 32,000 people. And actually, it will be much bigger numbers, but we have a, a really um, um, kind of restrictions because we have actually um, amount of lockers that we can't have so many. So that's how the, the numbers of public relate to. All right. 
And then I just before I um, got is this 30 minutes. This is five minutes of the film. I have to show to you where I uh, done this work in Brazil, which actually explained even further what I'm thinking about. Why is relevant to involve the large public? It, this method is not only for the people who are artists or interested in art or the you know curators or the you know the the, the collectors. This this method is for everybody because everybody can take the part for himself. It, the, the science fiction writer who came every day in Serpentine Gallery and walked for three hours for ten days, I said, why are you doing this? He said, you know, I need to do this slow walk and I come home and write. So he took that part. If you're a musician, you take something else. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're a teacher, you take something else out of this. So anybody from any profession can actually benefit from this method. I just done method for the music and with the using the way how to listen in new way classic music like a Bach. I'm interested in the creative method for the classic painting. I, my dream is to have the night sky from Van Gogh. Uh, and just put in one single room in the museum that the visitor can be with the painting for 15 minutes alone. Because, you know, the material art is such a huge commodity. And uh, if you don't have $150 million and, uh, and you can enjoy, you know, like uh, what it was, the, the, uh, you enjoy the, the, on the privacy, that kind of painting. What about a normal person? What about somebody democratic who, who is just a simple citizen? He can come to this museum, you know, take your watch and take your telephone away in the locker, put the headphones, sit in this alone room and be with the masterpiece for 15 minutes. This is the kind of ideas I have and I just want to show this. I don't think we need art in nature. Nature is so perfect already without us. We need art in the cities. We need art in the cities which human beings don't have any time. In the cities, they are polluted. In the cities, they have too much noise. We have to take experience from nature and transmit it into the cities. I always believe that the function of art is a function of bridge. To bridge different people from different social backgrounds. Different religious beliefs. Different races. But it's also about communication between physical world and the spiritual world. Or just simply between two human beings. I think this trip was very important to me. Not just to get new ideas, 
but also to open my mind into something different. After I come back, somehow the puzzle came together in a very clear and bright image. I understood that I have to give tools to the public to experience their own self. I have to just blend in. I have to be like a conductor. because I'm always performing in the front of the public. I'm engaging with the public. The public is my mirror. And I'm the mirror of the public too. Everybody have trauma. Everybody have loneliness. Everybody have fear of death. Everybody have pain. I'm giving part of myself and they give me part of themselves. The only way they can understand in much profound level what performance is, is they make their own personal journey. I am removing myself completely from the public. Public is the work. In the front of me is a cave. And I'm going to explore. So just to finish, I want to say that one for me, the one of the main reasons doing art is to lift human spirit. And the culture is not luxury, it's necessity. Thank you.